Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go around. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, another Brad Zinker urban trapper from Boker, the new Jack Wolf knife that's prowling my pocket, and a look at some absolute cardboard destroyers. All that and more right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Thanks for joining me again on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Uh, my favorite comment from the week uh, was about the Jack Wolf Knives Laid Back Jack. I did a uh, an unboxing uh, as soon as the knife arrived. Uh, this one is from Greek Veteran. He says, I like the full flat grinds on my EDC knives, but the full hollow grind like that is still great. It would cut and slice like crazy, and that edge won't get fat behind the edge through years of sharpening. That Warren Cliff folder with the gray mat my car to handles is one of the rare occasions I would leave my Victorinox at home and carry it. And I thought that that was uh, quite a nice comment because I know, we all know, just from uh, the interviews with Ben, that's exactly what he's going for with these knives. Rehashing uh, traditional designs, making them modern, putting them in modern materials, uh, but maintaining the true spirit of the knife itself. And uh, here we have someone who would put his Victorinox down uh, to carry this knife. So there you go, Ben. That's what you were going for. Uh, so my favorite comment of the week. So what was I carrying today? Let's do a pocket check, shall we? Um, I think that you need to let me know what you're carrying as well. You can leave a comment below. Uh, when you do that, it helps me figure out new knives that I should get and cover here on the channel. So uh, let me know what you're carrying. Today, I had uh, my most uh, venerated and um, valuable, not valuable. What's the word I'm looking for? Valued. I love this thing. That's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, the Demco MG8020. MG stands for machine ground. That blade is uh, machine ground. So it's sort of a, um, what do you call it? A, a mid-tech, if you will. Um, and made in his shop in Wampum, PA, his, their shop in Wampum, PA. You can see it right there on the on the pivot. And just an awesome knife. I was recently watching a video where Jim Skelton sort of discovered this knife for himself. And it, it made me want to carry this again and put it back in my pocket. I got it a little over a year ago, carried it a lot, hot and heavy for a while. And then you know how things happen. It rotated out. Uh, but it's still on my you know, way at the top of my list and uh, on my top shelf in my knife collection. Uh, so that's the Demco MG8020. By the way, the 8020.5, you hear me call that an ugly blade. I'm sorry, the shark's foot, an ugly shaped blade, but I do it with the greatest affection. It's like E.T., the extraterrestrial uh, uh, Hollywood alien. He's ugly, but in a cute kind of way. That's That's how I feel about the shark's foot blade. Uh, all right, next up, this was a weird carry. I must admit, today was, a, was an odd carry. My other knife was a full size for most people. For me, it's slightly small, uh, but an, a full size flipper. Um, that's my American Blade Works Model 1 version 5. Uh, this is one version before he settled on the final uh, tweakage and design. And this thing is awesome. Now, uh, this was like a... Um, Mm, pain in the butt teenager for a long time and but finally it's broken in and blossomed into a well-adjusted uh really smooth and trustworthy knife it was always trustworthy i'm just talking about the action uh, it took a while for the bearings to really um create a smooth race uh for themselves to move through uh, around the pivot of this heavily blasted blade this is S35VN. I haven't had any issues with the blasting and uh, corrosion or anything like that. Why was I carrying two somewhat full-size uh, modern folders on me? That's not ordinarily how I do it. Usually it would be much smaller. I don't know. I think I haven't given enough, spent enough time with the American Blade Works Model 1. It is a fantastic knife. And uh, now that it's really smooth, getting smoother, and uh, noticeably so, it's even more of a pleasure to carry. So I guess today I just wanted a little bit of uh, American Blade Works action. So 
Uh, there's that. And then and then to compensate for the fact that I had two, you know, full size folders on me, I carried this very small um, fixed blade. This is the Dylan Blade, uh, Dylan Grace Blade Company, DG Blade Co. Scalpel and Warney. Uh, I love this knife. I really like this guy's work. Uh, he's been on the show before. He does some stuff that is really refined like this. And by refined, I'm just talking about that incredible Buckeye Burl handle and how nicely contoured it is. What a beautiful section of Burl it is. And then that resin filling in the voids. And then a really nice forged blade, just beautifully done. And then comes to a wicked sharp uh, edge. Now, and point, this thing is a great, great EDC utility uh, fixed blade. If you're doing utility chores, this thing is awesome. Um, I think this is O1 Tool Steel, I believe. So I'm, uh, you you have these different postures for holding it. You can hold it like this, like this. You can even carry it and use it like this if you needed to. Uh, but a very very useful little fixed blade knife. Now in these really uh, tight and well molded kydex like leather sheaths that he does he uh, no one else really seems to do this I, I i think it's awesome i don't know why more people don't do it uh but it's like kydex and it fits nicely in the waistband for me and uh but also would drop really well in a pocket and just be able to uh, about that much of that beautiful burl wood handle would be popping up out of your pocket next to this big black clip uh, i would get a different clip on it if i were to carry it in my pocket, but this is uh, totally adequate for uh, in the waistband carry. Uh, this could be a, a very good just in the pocket fixed blade knife. That's what I'm getting at. You could take this clip off and with the thin profile of this leather. And by the way, this leather is really tough and hard. It would take some real doing to get that point to come through the leather. So you could just take this clip off, drop it in your pocket in any standard jeans pocket or khakis uh, sort of pocket, and it would it would just drop in there and you wouldn't see it at all. So a really cool knife uh, from a great maker uh, who does some really refined stuff like this. And this is what I was getting at. And then some really rustic looking stuff that is also very cool. Much of it is Japanese inspired, but uh, through Orlando, Florida. <laughs> so uh, this is what I was carrying today. The Demco MG8020, the American Blade Works Model 5 version or Model 1 version 5. And the DG Blade Co. Warning Scalpel. What were you carrying? Let me know. You can call the listener line 724 466 4487, or you can drop a comment down below. I would love to see uh, what you were carrying today and what you're thinking. Uh, you know, what's on your knife mind, if you will. Uh, if you also, if you're interested in helping the show, uh, help pay the bills here, uh, help me get new knives coming in and out, you can, you can do so by Go into the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Check out the different tiers of support. At the top tier, you get entered into a monthly knife giveaway. You get uh, interview extras and other stuff. So check it out right here. You can you can zap this QR code or you can just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon to support the show. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit the knifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash save on gas. On this show and on the interview show, we talk a lot about companies and their capacities and their uh, areas of focus. You have Chris Reeve Knives, who um, is a smallish company and focuses on just a couple of designs like the Sabenza, the Umnumzan, and, and a couple of others and just perfect them. I mean, they start out perfect and they perfect them over the years. And, and they stick with what they know. And then there are other companies that have uh, greater capacity, let's say Boker in this case. And they have the opportunity because of their capacity to every year put out a whole bunch of new models, and, you know, see what will stick and uh, like throwing spaghetti at the wall. And then they also have their models that they refine or reiterate ad infinitum. 
Uh, in Boker's case, for instance, uh, you have the uh, Burnley Quaken, or um, you know they, there are a million different versions of the Burnley Quaken. Uh, some not even made by Boker, like they're out the front. Um, Boker also uh, this must be a good strategy for them. You know, you get a good knife uh, that is popular across a lot of different styles of carry, and then you just reimagine it over and over and over for every possible type of knife user and collector okay so boker has done this again with the urban trapper the brad zinker design a a across the board appealing design by by my standard it is slim slender but uh just under three and a half inches very capable nice length blade great action just cool and classy they've uh, created large small versions of this light versions of this just all sorts now they've come out with one that is oddly uh universal but still not universal i mean in terms of knife laws around the world this is a non-locking brad zinker um urban trapper uh it, it looks good it looks like an urban trapper this uh, has some olive wood handle scales and such uh but but this knife is um non-locking which means that it will be legal way more places but it still has a long blade and a flipper uh, so it's a it's a double detent flipper non-locking knife and so it's not a slip joint but it's in effect it's a non it's a non-locking knife so in effect it's like a slip joint um what's holding it open is a detent ball and then the pressure that your forefinger exerts on that flipper tab uh, the the reason it's sketchy is that a lot of places don't like the flipper tab because that evokes switchblade that evokes uh, quick scary action so it's odd to me, uh, and, and also the blade length thing. Uh, I would think that if they were doing this, they would want to make this as universal as possible so they would knock the blade length down a bit, um, In you know, if if I were the head of Boker. Uh, so they still have the long, uh, the three and a half inch drop point blade and the flipper, uh, yet it doesn't lock open. I don't know. It, it seems like they went halfway. Seems like to do this, you remove the flipper, and you remove an inch worth of blade uh, or, or half an inch worth of blade so that it's three inches or just under three inches and so that it doesn't have the flipper tab and so that it doesn't lock and then it's universal hell you, you could take off the uh, pocket clip just to be safe and then everywhere in the world would accept it um just my thoughts uh if you're going to riff endlessly on a knife design um I don't know. Well, maybe they have the one that I just described in the offing. Maybe there's going to be another one. It'll be called like the flip joint light, the flipperless flip joint double detent light um, urban trapper. Uh, if it sounds like I'm being sarcastic, I am just a touch. I do get kind of uh, um, sick of seeing the same thing over and over, just a slightly different flavor. It reminds me of the different types of Duff beer, you know, Duff light, Duff ice, Duff dark, all coming out of the same keg. All right, uh, two new Wii flippers coming up. These and and I, <laughs> I don't mean to sound negative, ladies and gentlemen, but these are just knives, and they look clean and nice, uh, but uh, nothing too new from Wii. The exciting thing about the first one here, the Kulex, it is a nice looking knife. It is very, it's a very clean, modern uh, design. The exciting thing is, and we can't see it in the picture uh, uh, right here, but it's a it's a high end button lock. Now we know the Wii Knife Company through Civivi has been crushing it with the button locks the past two years. This this year for them is year of the button lock. So it's good to see if you're on that train and you're really excited about the Civivi button locks and you love Wii uh, Knife, you're going to be very excited about the coolest because here it is uh, just to. Um, fill that high-end titanium uh coolex uh, i'm sorry that high-end titanium need that you might have and and this nicely blued uh, anodized uh titanium it looks very tempting and if you like that sort of really useful blade shape uh you might just go for this because it's uh it's a high-end button lock uh just under three inches uh good looking blade so that's that's the usp for this one it's a high-end button lock that's 20 cv steel on that drop point uh next one is the speedster uh speedster it looks cool 
it looks cool. It's not, uh, these are both in-house designs. It's not anything that's going to, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't get my heart racing, but uh, also it looks kind of cool. It's slick. Uh, this is a new titanium frame lock, uh, three and a half inch drop point, 20 CV. Uh, it's kind of par for the course. I, I feel like we plays it safe now. I feel like they have Civivi and Sencut to do the exciting stuff. And the more expensive stuff, they play it safe these days. Uh, we, when they first came out, everything was four inches in blade length, which I liked or appreciated, I should say. And then everything was very over-designed. And I appreciate that things are not as over-designed, uh, but it also seemed like they were just uh, putting a concept knife after concept knife after concept knife. This is when everything was still numbered. And uh, they were doing a lot of exciting different things. Maybe the public taste has swung and changed, and maybe people uh, prefer the simple now uh, to the chance taking. But yeah, I think the most exciting stuff happening from the Wii Knife Company is from their lower end brands, the uh, the Savivis and the, uh, the uh, Sencut doing some cool stuff too. Uh, so that's my take on these new knives coming out. Uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, uh, we're going to take a look at three. I, I had a, an absolutely incredible weekend in terms of knife haul. We're going to take a look at three new knives in my collection and then uh, 10 cardboard destroyers. We had a an Ikea build weekend. A shelf finally came in for the Legos in uh, one daughter's room. So uh, that went together and it came in a beautiful, gigantic box, which had to be broken down by a number of different knives. That got me started thinking about which are the best knives for that in my collection. So I'm going to show those off coming up right here in a moment on the Knife Junkie podcast. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. One of the knives that has been a constant over the past uh, month and a half here on the channel and on the podcasts and Thursday Night Knives has been the Jack Wolf Knives Sharpshooter Jack, this beautiful modern interpretation of the classic uh, gunstock slip joint imagined designed, uh, imagined and designed by Ben Belkin, the uh, head of Jack Wolf Knives and masterfully produced somewhere overseas, which he can contractually not disclose beautiful knife well he sent me the second one in the series he's going to be releasing one per month for six months which is exciting uh he sent me this one and it is the new laid back jack and it is a gorgeous rendition of the swayback jack the classic swayback jack with that worn cliff blade in this case, M390 blade steel, full height hollow grind. This is the knife that the comment uh, was about in the beginning of the show. And a uh, uh, Greek veteran was saying he would give up his Swiss Army knife to carry this because of that uh, really nice full height uh, hollow grind. Just gorgeous. And then whoever produced this uh, does amazing belt satin work on these blades. This one has a really nice swedge ground in there and you can see the grind lines on the swedge and with that triangular sharpening notch uh greek veteran was right you could sharpen this thing way north of the cutting edge where it is right now factory and still have a useful thin edge uh, behind the behind that bevel this model is uh black micarta I have a, I'm, I'm tempted just to take a little linseed oil to it and really blacken it up, but there's also something nice. I can see my, my thumbprint there uh, from when I was handling it earlier. Um, so I, I'm going to let this one naturally patina. What a beautiful knife. Uh, if, if you're a uh, slip joint guy, let me just, let me just say that if you find these hyped, man, it is worth it. If you're a slip joint guy, check this out. I'm going to come to the main, uh, mic and camera just listen to the walk and talk it's really really good and then when it's in the half stop position the spring is 100 percent fully flush uh, another thing that slip joint people appreciate and then it snaps open with authority it, it just feels 
like a solid thing that's ready for work. I I know that I'm going to baby this one a little bit because I'm a little nervous about the tip, I must admit. And that's a robust tip. If you look at it, uh, that swedge uh, thins up right by the hump, but it thickens up. The tip is very useful, uh, and and the tip is trustworthy. I am not. That's what I'm getting at, and I'm nervous about dropping this one for some reason. So I'm not. I'm going to stop talking about it so that I don't uh, make it real with my words. <laughs> All right. So this was one uh, that I got, and of course, um, I left the box elsewhere. But it has the the full Jack Wolf knives treatment. Laid back Jack is another wolf character created by. Ben and the comic book artist that he works with. And there's a beautiful um, piece of artwork wrapping the aluminum tin, tin that's embossed with the logo on top. You open it up, there's a pog. There's a different colored uh, cleaning cloth in it this time that the knife is wrapped in. This time it's a seafoam green. And there's another sticker in there. And just, just soup to nuts, a great knife experience. And And the knife itself is heirloom quality, just uh, I'm so thrilled with it. So if if you can, uh, I recommend highly that you go check out uh, the different dealers that Ben sells these uh, Jack Wolf knives on and, and get yourself on a list or just hit the button when they go live. And uh, it's usually around uh, the 15th of right around the middle of the month. He's going to be releasing these. So do jump on it. I highly recommend it. And if you only get one uh, so far, well, geez, they're both awesome. And I don't know if the uh, sharpshooter jack is even an option there. Uh, I think that's pretty much sold out. So get this knife. It's awesome. Okay, next up, uh, the Towser K. This is one that I've been very, very interested in um, since its release. And then uh, they sold out real quickly. I guess I wasn't interested enough. <laughs> they sold out pretty quickly. And then they they just came back on the scene. Uh, this is a an a Azo design, Azo. Azo, I think. I think he designs a lot of stuff for. Um, does he do some Tucson knife and uh, Kaiser? And uh, I think he's the gentleman who designed the Beg Lighter. Am I correct in that? Uh, anyway, he designed this one and it's awesome. I, and I ordinarily don't go in for the cleaver blades. This one massages a different spot. You know, uh, it's sort of worn cliffy, sort of belly worn cliff. Uh, approaching cleaver but you have a nice point on this um this one in particular is the blue rich light model i wanted to try out rich light it's kind of like a paper micarta uh the other model uh is for the same price with a contoured red micarta it was hard to choose but i since i had no rich light in my collection i decided to get the um to get this this particular one i love the way it looks it would have been nice if this were contoured also, I got to say, to 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 be honest. Um, but the flat slabs work fine. You have a great row of jimping here that extends very far. They understand, uh, Azo understands that people are going to be coming all the way up there to power through materials, as I did. I used this. This is going to be uh, featured in the 10 great cardboard destroyers because this went to town on some Ikea boxes yesterday. and man it slipped between the atoms you got here a little working surface it's kind of like a choil um but it's just a little jimped surface so you can come up even further on the blade if you need to use that point for something delicate very nice ergonomics really insane action i kind of wish i had this knife when i did my action uh podcast a little while ago because this thing is just uh dangerously smooth <laughs> dangerously smooth it will drop on you on you if you're not careful and it's got a pretty good weight to that blade just due to all the mass so it just closes really nicely uh, deep carry pocket clip is not recessed but has the recessed screws very nice standoffs beefy standoffs this is a good work knife uh, i'm really happy to have gotten it i didn't get it for that necessarily but that's 154 cm, and that is a really thinly ground blade. So I had to press it into use yesterday, and I'm glad I did. All right, last up uh, is one that came on my radar, and I jumped on it super, super quick. 
Uh, this is uh, something that NAF Sergeant introduced me to, to through his video, introduced us to uh, last week or several weeks back, or maybe two weeks back now, um, from an American watch company, Resto, uh, I'm sorry, Resco Instruments. They make dive watches uh, that a lot of uh, watch nuts like. And uh, they make a knife. Now, this is a little bit different from the one that he has, uh, that he showed off, but this is their Gooseworks Mekong Delta uh, Combat Folder. <laughs> Mekong Delta Combat Folder. This is a watch company started by some, some frogmen, uh, SEALs from the Navy, and uh, this is a knife that they designed and manufacture, and it is like... It's amazing, and I love it. It's got a big blade. It's a four-inch blade. Uh, it's four and a quarter from the pivot to the tip. That's how they measure it, so that's how I'll say it. Uh, but it's just about a four-inch blade. Um, titanium, thick slabs of titanium that are milled out for weight savings on the inside. But the way it's constructed and the, um, the washer action which is luxurious and smooth like a Sebenza, makes this thing feel heavier than it is. It just feels like a stout brick of a knife. Um, I, I brought a couple of knives out that it, it, it reminds me of. In terms of feel, it, it reminds me of the feel of a Sebenza and a uh, Spartan Harzi folder. It has that sort of solidity. If you're familiar with these knives and familiar with the action and how just overwhelmingly solid they feel they remind me of that in terms of looks it reminds me a lot of the old uh, emerson viper 5 i believe it is the one that they turned into a um zt it looks a bit like the zt 0640 in terms of the profile of the handle um but then again there are a few things new under the sun it's Similar, not exact, uh, but like many tactical knives, it widens out here. It has a choil for the for the thing, but it did uh, for the lock. But it did strike me uh, when I saw it. I was like, oh, this reminds me of the 0640 or the Emerson Viper. Um, I, I have really quickly fallen in love with this knife. Uh, this blasted titanium is just beautiful. It's uh, There's no way of stopping the snail trailing, and, and I'm happy about that. I'm looking forward to a nice patina, quote unquote, developing on this titanium. It's already begun on the clip where unfortunately I've rubbed up against stuff it's starting to uh, wear down the, the Resco logo. That's fine by me. That's what happens to pocket clips. They get they get messed up. That's why I'm not that's why really nice pocket clips worry me like the like the pocket clip on my turbo that the knife modders did. Uh, Got to be careful with that one. Just because it's so nice, I don't want to walk up against a countertop and scrape it and all that. But uh, I'm going to reiterate a sentiment that NAF Sergeant brought up in his video. Now, his was a little bit different. Didn't have the steel lock bar insert. It was a bolster lock with uh, micarta, totally handsome, gorgeous knife, and had a um, hollow grind. This is not a hollow grind. This is a this is extremely sharp, but it's sort of obtuse. Uh, kind of like um, some Microtech knives are. Uh, so what I was going to say is I want to re reiterate what he was saying. This is a knife that fits in the category of the, the big triumvirate, uh, Hinderer knives, Chris Reeve knives, um, Strider knives, uh, Spartan blades. I'll add that in there. Uh, this is one of those kind of knives, Demco. It's just like solid as it can be solid as can be and it looks cool and i like the name of it and i need to find out more about the people behind this knife it showed up uh in a in a priority small priority box it was wrapped in foam wrap and sort of just taped to the inside of the box like zero pomp and circumstance for this knife um and to me that's also kind of attractive it reminds me of the tactical ziploc bags you used to get the um, striders in or the or the tactical peanuts you used to get in with your with your hinderer knives this is just wrapped up and and sent to you i think it's cool as hell and i 
I'm going to seek out the gentleman or gen gentleman or men behind uh, this Resco Knives uh, Gooseworks Mekong Delta Combat Folder. Very, very, very cool knife. All right, so that brings us to the Cardboard Destroyers. Okay, so why cardboard? Why am I talking about this? This is a task that over and over and over is like... Uh, comes up the most when we talk about the things we do with our knives. Oftentimes it's open boxes for other knives and all that requires is a knife sharp enough to cut tape, which we could actually just use a key if we wanted to really, really make the knife junkies around us bristle. But oftentimes we have a lot of boxes. We got to break them down to get them in recycling. And uh, so that means lots of cardboard cutting. Uh, usually, I find I can get away with bit large panels uh, lining the inside. I can fit quite a bit in there. But I also find that cutting giant cardboard boxes into very small pieces is gratifying. Uh, so there are some knives that are good for it and some that are surprisingly not. Um, before I go into my list of 10, and then I have two, two uh, also rands that are, that are very good but did, didn't quite make the list for one reason or another, which I'll explain. Uh, but one... I'm going to start off with that didn't make the list because it's just not available, uh, but is an amazing cardboard cutter. Is this uh, Niche Designs uh, Ingress? This is a knife designed by uh, Nick Rogers uh, of Niche Designs. And this was one of three different prototypes he had uh, created by We Knife Company a few years back. And he was uh, generous enough, gifted this one to me because it's the most tactical of the versions. Uh, but if you look at that super high grind, it's a super, I mean, that's a full height, a uh, full height grind on most knives. Have this, you know, and it just uh, followed the contour of the spine. So this thing just cuts like a maniac and, uh, and takes very little, uh, very little maintenance. Also that's 20 CV steel. So, uh, one of my absolute best, but I can't mention it here because it's just not available. And uh, and I'm a lucky guy to have it. Let me say that way. Okay, of of all of my knives, this is the classic has probably broken down the most cardboard uh, of any of them. This is my Spyderco Endura 4. Now, why the Endura, not the Delica? I will say because of length. Now, part of what makes a good cardboard cutter is, uh, you know, a huge part of it. <laughs> the chief part of it is the blade. But also, do you, you know, cardboard can be a challenging material on the hands if you're holding something that's not comfortable. Uh, one of our runners up uh, ran into that situation. Here with the with the Endura, you have the confidence of that long, almost four inch blade to be slicing. This is the full flat ground version of VG10 to be slicing through cardboard um, and not running out of blade. And also have a full four finger grip that that is flexible. I can get a full four fingers on the Delica, but I can't move around. This I can move around. There's there's space, and uh, also my thumb is far enough away from that lock that I'm never worried about about undoing it. This has done so much work over the years. Um, this this is the knife that when I need a good knife to do work like around the house inside this is usually what i go to um and has gotten the most use though i have a few new ones that are that are taking its place next up is is i think yes next up is the only hollow grind on this list which though i love hollow grinds and i think they cut and slice so nicely sometimes i find that the shoulder at the top of that hollow grind uh can slow things down uh, if it's too hollow or or what have you. This knife is is the perfect combination because it's got a super thin blade uh, stock and then a very uh, deep hollow grind. This is the Civivi Asticus. Um, I just love that name. I need to, well, all right, I'm not, I'm not going to riff on it, but I think it's funny. Uh, has a nice long swedge on top, which aids in penetration uh, but really what this thing is all about is that long, that's about four inches, that long, super thin hollow ground slicey blade. And and really with that swedge up here, it also helps with the slicing because that shoulder I was talking about that I bump up against on a lot of uh, uh, hollow ground knives, that shoulder is reduced 
by uh, this hollow grind intersecting with this top swedge, which is also somewhat hollow. So a really great knife all around because it's thin and super rigid and capable, uh, but very light and somewhat large. This is a great knife. This hits a lot of great um, this hits a lot of points for people if they like large knives but don't like heavy knives because it is, like I said, svelte in the pocket. You've got the recessed pocket screws. Um, it's got that rigid steel frame. Um, and it comes in a number of, this is the most plain Jane with the black G10. There's a wood version, uh, which is really nice looking. Uh, uh, there's uh, all different kinds of G10s. And then you can also get this with Damascus steel. So the Astacus is a great knife overall, uh, but also a very good cardboard knife. It's also quite comfortable, even though it's thin and those liners stand proud, very comfortable to use uh, for a while in cardboard cutting. So next up is the knife that I said uh, I, I mentioned with the Endura that something has been eclipsing it lately, and that's this. This is the uh, Protec TR2. This is one I got on Blade Forums a few years ago from a guy uh, in Texas or Oklahoma who had a farm who used this knife uh, for harvest one season. And I thought that was cool, <laughs> knowing that it was coming uh, here for retirement, basically to be lavished with attention and get some work, but but not like his old harvesting days. Uh, when this TR2 showed up, it, it was gritty. The action was gritty, but it still kicked like a mule. And just through uh, blasting it with air, putting a little bit of oil on the pivot and opening and closing it a million times, it really smoothed out and it still kicks like a mule. And uh, soon in July, July 1st in in our great uh, Commonwealth here, I'll be able to carry this legally out and about uh, on July 1st. So I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm also very much looking forward to my automatic um, collection blossoming uh, <laughs> as that law passes. A great thing about this knife is the jimping, like, like all Protex and Microtex, their milling in aluminum is just outstanding. The jimping really does uh, grip. It's very, <coughs> pardon me, very sharp jimping. And uh, also the knurling up front here and at the back is very grippy. That knurling has, ne has never like rounded out. It's sharp and grippy. So if you have to hold this in a pinch grip like this, man, you're in, you're in, you're in a good spot. Uh, this has been used for a lot of painting at this point. Uh, you see that light blue. I can't get it out of there without really messing up the anodization. Uh, taking a wire brush to it might do it, but I'm just going to leave it in there for memories. I'm not going to get rid of this knife anyway. Uh, my daughter expressed an interest in owning that one day, so she can remember the time we painted her room as she flips it open to ward off the the, the boys. All right, next up is a really good one with an asterisk all right so this is the trm atom and we all know this knife uh that it does have great action that was just bad deployment on my end great knife great knife we know this as an ergonomic slim light comfortable great fit and finish super slicer great uh length you got a three and a half inch or a 3.6 inch blade i think on this one three Yep, uh, about three and a half inch blade on this one. Um, thin and slicey, great for cardboard. Here's the asterisk. First of all, uh, I did not use this one on cardboard. This is a DLC version and my only Atom at this point. I had two. The other one was a stonewashed one, and that's the one that I had the cardboard experiences with. Um, that is no longer in my hands. I have no doubt this, is, uh, especially with that very slick DLC coating, uh, would do great in cardboard also. I just have not used this one in particular. Here's the one thing. <clears throat> here's the one. Here's the other asterisk about this knife. Uh, I very much prize these knives. And I'm a, I'm a little, I got to say, I'm a little delicate with it because it is thin. It is not a delicate knife. It is a thin yet robust knife. And still, in my mind, even though that thin blade with that awesome grind 
just glides through the cardboard like it's barely there. I'm always worrying about the pivot. Um, and that's me. That is not the knife. The knife is fully capable. It's just I prize this one so much. And the other one that I had that uh, I don't know, it's so light. It makes me feel like, oh, is this going to something going to happen to this knife? So that's so the asterisk on the TRM Adam is a personal neurotic reaction. OK, I think that it is 100 percent capable. I broke down cardboard with the other one and nothing ever happened to the pivot. And it worked great. So just get over it. Thank you for this little session. Check is in the mail. All right. Next up is a Finch knife. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't. This is my favorite of the Finch knives in terms of cardboard. Uh, and that is my favorite thing to do with this knife. This is the Harvester. Uh, originally inspired by the Sodbuster knives that uh, uh, Steve's. Uh, the designer of this knives uh, in-laws carried. However, now they have the Chernobyl ant out, which is also really cool. And that is a true flipping uh, sod buster. This is like a sod buster ish handle with a uh, totally different kind of blade on it. And that blade is awesome for cardboard, full flat ground, thin. Uh, it's 154 CM. Uh, one of my favorite blade steels. And it slips through cardboard again, like it's not there. It has a really nice downward um, angle of attack on the blade there. If as you if you're watching, you can see how it intersects with that straight line. If you if you straighten the spine with a straight line, and then you just see how when you're pulling this through, it acts sort of like a recurve. It's just constantly uh, re-engaging the material just by drawing it through because of the angle. A great knife for cardboard. Now this is a knife that I thought was going to be awesome for feather sticking. And it probably would be, but uh, the time I tried, I, it was on some of that, um, what do you call it? Uh, kiln dried wood, super hard uh, that I just buy at the grocery store to throw on the fire pit. And um, it was doing okay, but there was another case where I started worrying about the pivot. And uh, in that moment, I pulled out a fixed blade I was carrying, the Hogtooth EDC, and uh, that went to town on it. And I didn't have to worry about the pivot. I, I think there's almost no need to try and do that kind of woodwork with a folding knife. It just makes me nervous. Uh, you say, what about whittling, Bob? Well, you're right. I guess there's whittling. Uh, but uh, if given the choice for wood, I would use a fixed blade. But for cardboard, I would have no problem and uh, would, would happily recommend this knife. I would recommend this knife anyway. It's a great EDC. Uh, knife, but for cardboard and that kind of uh, task in particular, man, it's awesome. All right, love me the Finch knives. You know, I've fallen behind on my Finch knife collection. I gotta, I gotta catch up. Too many knives, man. No, no, I take it back. All right, next up, uh, I showed this off before. A, a happy new collection, a happy new addition to my collection, the uh, Towser K. Love this thing. I've been. I've gotten a few Kaisers uh, recently. You know, I got the uh, mini, the Pelican mini. And uh, and then about a year ago, I traded Dave for the um, the inversion. Man, they make some great knives. Uh, I used to have a lot of Kaisers. I got rid of them. And then now I've been slowly reacquiring them. This knife has just outstanding action. I know we're talking about cardboard, uh, but it's just... It just goes to show, I mean, th this is just, it's amazing where everything has come. Let me just show this up, up front. I'm going to show the drop shutty nature of this blade. Okay. All right. All I'm getting at is that it's super smooth. I talk about this a lot. I don't require that. I don't even necessarily prefer it. I was talking before about the glassy uh, action on this knife. The the I love that sort of glassy action on washer knives but there's no denying that this is a, a sign of quality that you can have that kind of action and have absolutely zero blade play north or south east or west and then have such a perfectly ground blade and shaped blade for cardboard cutting this is as if they created it for the task something i like a lot that i showed off before is this sort of work surface here uh, that's jimped 
that engages your forefinger very well if you need to choke way up and use the point for some uh, precision task. Uh, back here, it feels great. It feels great in all those grips. Um, of course, you would never use this. I can't imagine why you would use this uh, reverse grip, but if you had to, it feels good in reverse grip as well. But the star of the show here is that blade. Now, why do I say this thing is, is designed for cardboard? Well, I found that with these very large boxes, uh, you know, that furniture comes in, oftentimes I'm not starting at the top and cutting all the way down. Sometimes I'm just thrusting in the middle, cutting down, and then, you know, starting in the middle somewhere. So I like, I prefer a tip on my... Uh, on my cardboard cutting knives and and you will see that my absolute favorite has has a tip even though it looks like it might not uh so this thing's tip is really really good it it punctures very nicely but it's also pretty stout uh there is no swedge there uh, so it is like a triangle coming at the cardboard it it yawns it wide open and then and then really you get almost no resistance as you push this blade through cardboard and then if you do it on a seam you know, like on the seam of, of, of a flap and you just go, it's like the seam, it's like it's not even there. It's like you're just waving it through the air. Uh, I am a big fan of this rich light handle material. Not sure how well the color is coming through with this green background, but it's a gorgeous blue. It's a, just a beautiful, beautiful blue. It's a little bit deeper than that thunder thunderhead blue that I like, but it's not as cheery as this here um, Delica blue. So very happy with this. It was a, uh, it was a, it was a real Sophie's choice to try and figure out. I shouldn't even make light of that, but it was a real tough choice for me to try and figure out between uh, the micarta, because it comes in a red micarta contoured scales, or this, and uh, have no rich light. So I thought I'd go with the rich light, and I also like the color better. Uh, the the red micarta. Well, I'll get that on the second one, but Towser K really really excellent next up is probably the fanciest of the bunch um this is my tucson ts 301 in d2 and this is a monster with uh cardboard really 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 great cardboard cutter this also has an asterisk though the one issue with this knife is that for cardboard cutting you have about two-thirds of that blade as truly useful the point is good for getting into stuff but also it's it's a pretty extreme trailing point so if you're not um accounting for that when you're push cutting if you're slashing more than push cutting you're going to come to the end of the run of of useful edge and it's going to slip out and follow that curve as long as you're thinking about that and thinking about the trailing point and doing push cuts more than you are slashing or or dragging uh the edge through you'll you'll love this knife it's really comfortable in hand and like i mentioned before that is a big part of it you don't want to be cutting through cardboard for a long period of time with something that doesn't feel excellent in hand this one does it's contoured uh, these are micarta and carbon fiber overlays by the way you feel no transition between the two materials it's pretty impressive uh that that sculpted titanium pocket clip is very low profile and sort of uh, crowned over so that you don't even feel it in hand. And you can really grip this one in a solid hammer grip and, and just power through stuff straight. Uh, you find your, if you find yourself in this saber grip, then you need to kind of uh, cant your wrist a little bit more that way so that you're feeding uh, the cardboard, the material into this section and not slipping off over that. Uh, so that's the one caveat for this knife, but the performance is so impressive when you're when uh, this knife is being put to that use in in the way I just described that it definitely makes this list. Something I also have to mention is there are some knives <clears throat> that I suspect would do very well that I just I'm not going to cut cardboard with. Uh, so I'll never know, <laughs> but uh, I might have a few of those in the collection. All right. Uh, Next up, this this is a knife that lives in the kitchen. We have one of those things in our kitchen, you know, where random mail that 
we want to ignore goes or no, I'm just kidding. Things, announcements from school and calendar stuff and a tape measure and pencils and stuff kind of sits next to the wall. Um, well, this resides in there. Uh, this is the Cold Steel um, Luzon XL. This is a six inch bladed knife. That's 8CR13 MOV. This is Grivery, the handle. This is a, when I bought it, $45 huge XL knife. I'm sure it's more at this point. Uh, 45 bucks was pretty low. That was pre inflation, uh, but still pretty low for what you're getting here. That's six inches of very well heat treated 8CR13 MOV in a frame lock or a liner lock that has a secondary lock there and uh, an integral uh, plastic pocket clip. That's a little annoying, but uh, fine for this. And it's a flipper. Flips out pretty well. You can also whip it out, uh, you know, just through inertia, or not inertia, through centrifugal force if you were using this as a self-defense knife. But as I've mentioned, this, is, um, this lives in the kitchen and uh, is closest to the area where the recycling is outside so this frequently will get grabbed to break down cardboard um it is very sharp like like all cold steels it's wickedly sharp that hcr 13 mov is no joke uh, the, i mean they know what they're doing with heat treat and this this knife has never required a major sharpening i do strop it up i have a strop in the kitchen that i'll run this over when i'm done using it but on the whole the hcr has been a, an outstanding uh heat treated blade and really you get comfort uh, out of this you get you know just endless comfort in the handle and then endless blade well you got six inches of blade length so you're never running out of blade uh, you can just slice and dice through uh, cardboard like it's not there that sort of shiny uh, sort of belt satin really helps the material uh, helps this slip through material those are not very tall shoulders at the top of that uh, uh, edge, so at the top of that bevel. So this thing is just awesome. Plus, I don't mind thrashing on it. It's a an inexpensive but large knife, and uh, yeah, it's it's the cold steel, the XL cold steel that I have in my giant collection of XL cold steels that actually gets work. This one and an old Vaquero Grande. All right. Penultimate in my official list is the only fixed blade on this list, and I'm pretty sure you may have guessed what it is. Uh, but it is the Steingraber Performance Knives Shark. This thing, first of all, show it in the sheath. Awesome, awesome sheath. That is a big part of the recipe with a fixed blade, especially an EDC fixed blade, which is what this is. This is a tops spring clip. Fits perfectly on there. And this is one knife that I like to carry scout style up front i'm not sure if that's considered scout style but right across the belt buckle um I'll take out this the uh take out the knife here and here it is this is my only crew wear knife and i do like crew wear steel i i have discovered um but this knife is just awesome it it looks like a shark okay the profile that's kind of the obvious many knives do but it is fully flat ground and so thin. It's laser thin. I'm, I'm going to put this up to my mic and listen. Does that mean anything to you? I mean, you can tell how thin that is. This thing just unzips cardboard like, like a time machine. It's like it's going back in time and, and, and uncreating the cardboard as it glides through it. It's got a wickedly, incredibly comfortable handle i shouldn't say wickedly it's got a very very comfortable handle um which hits a lot of points for me for an edc fixed blade it is large enough for a full four finger grip for me uh with a little room to spare but it's a small enough rounded enough uh blade uh, uh rounded enough and small enough handle that i can tuck it in the waistband north to south and it feels totally fine uh but also this one is discreet enough i can just carry it on my uh on the front so yeah this this is this is actually tied for first this and the next one the next one is the one i use have been using the most recently but th this is a hard knife to beat 
period. Um, but for a cardboard knife, it's man, it's like it was born for it. Also, I like to show off how this unassuming knife could also be used as a nice little defensive tool because um, it's very comfortable in hand and facilitates many, many different grips. Um, so love the Steingraber performance knives. Shark, he's got another model of the Sasquatch, and then he's been working on his his folders. Oh, my God, his folders are amazing. You got to check out Alex Steingraber, Steingraber performance knives if you haven't already. All right, last up, my favorite, my favorite, I mean, I just love this one. This is the Off-Grid Knives Cleaver version 2. This one, you can see, has gotten a lot of action um, on that coating. I, an unexpected uh, unexpected favorite. I got this, um, and I was like, oh, it's cool. I like it. I like it's a cleaver with a tip. I do like a cleaver. Or if I have to have a cleaver, I like a tip, as I mentioned uh, before with this knife. Um, but this really, man, it takes tip to another dimension for a cleaver. If you look at it, it's got a, it's got a, a really pretty extreme swedge on the front that thins everything out to the point where you can push this through anything. It's got a very nice tip tip, but it comes to such a fine and thin edge just above the tip. And I'm not even talking cutting edge. I'm just talking swedge edge that it, 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 it punches through cardboard perfectly. So you can get this. I was talking before about if I have a big sheet, I like to stick it in the middle and then drag it down. Uh, well, this does that with that point, even though it's a, a cleaver, it does that with the point. And then I got to say the blade itself, the cutting blade itself, it's the best. It's the best out of all of these. And, and I, I don't know why, but it gives the Steingraber shark a run for its money. And I'm wondering if the difference between these two, uh, because they're about the same blade length, um, I mean, width, something about this coating on these D2 blades uh, that, that they use at uh, off-grid is so slick that I feel it aids in the cutting. So yeah, this, this thing just is comfortable. You've got that grip, and then you've got a full finger choil that you can use. Uh, I only have used this to cut up cardboard before I before I slice it this way. But you got a full four finger grip, very nice grip. You've got great access to the lock bar. You've got awesome action. You know, fall shut. You can even spidey flick it on the blade itself. Uh, you've got great looks uh, with that hole up front, evocative of a meat cleaver, and um, uh, deep carry pocket clip with everything recessed. This knife is so good and it's grown on me. I would love to see this with a, um, with different colored uh, G10s. I know off grid doesn't, doesn't really offer that much, uh, in terms of different colored G10s, but this would be a knife that would, this is like a collectible. This one he could start doing in a whole bunch of different handle scales. And I, I believe people would love, love to get them. Cause I think this is one of his uh, a, a very successful knife for him. All right. Uh, I said I had two runners up. Let me show them off real quick. Um, next one is a concept. This is the concept um, uh, Main Street. This is a great knife. It's very, very comfortable to hold for extended periods of time. It's sort of neutral, but it does keep your, it, it does have, um, ways to index you know it's got sort of ceremonial jumping up here that you can feel you can index up against this and then it's just got a long straight and pointy warncliffe blade and again that coating really aids in helping this thing slip through uh it the yeah and then and then lastly this one didn't make the list because i wanted to have just one knife from each brand uh, but Off Grid makes some amazing cardboard cutters. And this one was a surprise. This is the Off Grid Raptor. That blade shape, I thought, was just something he was doing to be different. Uh, that's Kerry, the designer. Uh, but it isn't. That that front recurve section is incredibly useful um, for scoring, cutting, and precision cutting and carving out 
of shapes in cardboard if uh, if if your druthers demand. But this straight here, this two and a half inch straight, is that two and a half inches? Uh, it's almost two inches of straight here. Oh my gosh. Just zip through like kind of like this, kind of like this. Now, the only reason this didn't supplant this. So the one, the one reason the Raptor didn't supplant the Cleaver version two is the ergonomics on the Raptor are not on point for me. The handle is a little small. My finger comes off the back and a lot of space is wasted on this finger guard and sort of awkward uh, flipper. I don't, I don't really like that situation there. And it's, it's not as comfortable to use over an extended period of time. And that's only in this area right in here. Other than that, this thing is amazing. Uh, the Raptor. It's an odd design um, that I thought was odd for odd's sake. And then realized once, once I started using it uh, in earnest, it's a very useful blade shape, if not a little odd and perhaps off-putting. All right. Well, that wraps up my list of 10 great cardboard destroyers. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. What do you think is best for cardboard? I know, I know tastes change. I know new knives come out all the time. And, uh, uh, so let me, let me know what's on your mind, which one you like best, uh, and what blade shape you like best. If you notice there weren't any tan tantos here, be sure to check in on Sunday for episode 314. We talk to Kambu again. That's Gregor Grabarski. Uh, he's a great guy from Poland designing tons of knives uh, exclusively for Best Tech. He's got some new ones out. We talk all about it. He's a great guy, and I love his designs. Uh, also, be sure to check in for Wednesday, uh, the Wednesday Supplemental, and Thursday night for Thursday Night Knives. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live here on YouTube, also on Twitch and Facebook. Lastly. Be sure to check out uh, the podcast apps. You can download us on all the podcast apps and listen as you drive, mow, and wash the dishes. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast